Hey everyone. So, we're here. We're at the new property and I wanted to give you a tour. I don't even know where to begin. Could that have really been two years ago? In some ways it seems like more actually. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you back in time to show you what things look like when we got here. And then I'll bring you up to date on everything we've done since then. And then I'll talk about what we're gonna be doing in the next couple of years. We have done a lot in those couple of years. I think I was naive moving in here and thinking we'd be a lot further ahead now than what we are. But after preparing for this video and watching some of these uh, videos back to realize we've done quite a bit. Now, some of the plans over the last couple of years changed drastically. I had originally planned our vegetable garden to be over where the pasture is now. So this will be the vegetable garden and it gets lots of sun. I am going to be terracing it because this is a fairly decent slant, more than you would want, especially for vegetables. I soon realized the eucalyptus trees would suck all the moisture out of the ground and that it would be too costly right up front to remove them. I also figured that it would be pretty difficult to terrace that large of an area with a rototiller and a rake. Some of you guys remember that plan? Remember when I tried that? We'll get there in a minute. But I quickly changed my mind. On the completely opposite side of the house is where I will now be doing the vegetable and the Mediterranean garden. Okay, so there's the end of the house. Imagine two lines coming straight out from both ends. The way it slopes down here, I'm going to make three flat terraces about 10 feet long from the house. And each one of those terraces coming straight out will have uh, five four foot by eight foot beds and they will work their way down the slope here. So I set to work on the terraces the only way I knew how, a rototiller and a rake. I don't know what I've gotten myself into. This is really compacted, rocky, and I think clay -y, a lot of clay soil. However, it will be so amazing just thinking about a green, beautiful oasis of productive vegetables growing out of this soil. It'll happen. Okay, this is working. What was a very sloped hill, I don't know if it shows on camera, is now an almost flat area, almost the 12 feet that I was looking for. It's working. Well, I thought it was working. But then I realized I'd only taken it down about a foot. And to get that terrace at the height it needed to be, I needed to take it down two more feet. I started to become really uh, anxious and dismayed about the whole thing. I really thought that we had made a bad decision moving to this property. There was no way that I was going to be able to do this with typical garden tools. Well, that's where God was watching over me because at that moment, an angel came into my life. Out of the blue, my brother-in-law, Jeff, called me and said that somebody with a tractor wanted to come over and help me. Huh? Apparently a friend of Jeff's watched my videos and he saw what an idiot I was trying to move a mountain with a rake. He just happened to be friends with Bill. And I will say this from now and forever, I am indebted to Bill because I really feel like we would have had to move in order to get a property that I could handle without heavy earth moving equipment being at my beck and call. Over the past two years, Bill has single-handedly reshaped our entire property and continues to do so. I mean, his generosity is something I'll be forever grateful for. Not only that, in the very beginning, he and his wife came over to see what they were getting into. 
And I took Bill around the property and I, I kind of laid out my vision for the entire thing. And he got it. He got it that night. And ever since that time, all I have to do is say, this is what I'm thinking. And he just goes and does it. And it always ends up exactly how I saw it in my head. So back to talking about the vegetable garden. On that first day that he came over to work here, he in one day, a couple hours, carved out three terraces that would have taken me years to do with a rake and a rototiller. And just a couple videos after saying I was giving up, I was able to show a completely carved out vegetable garden. Three terraces ready to go. Well, not ready to go. They still needed retaining walls to hold them up. So I picked out the stone we wanted, had it delivered. At that point, it was back on me to dig the trenches and build the walls. It took some time because I was racing against the clock. Spring was coming and I needed this garden to be ready to plant. But I made it just under the deadline and it was ready and the difference was remarkable. I had four terraces to garden in, all built into the hillside, framed with Mediterranean style stonework. We did it, almost. That was phase one of the plan. There were three beds on each terrace. And in the plan, the final plan, there were four beds on each terrace, plus a stairway and path. So right now it's just three beds across. What we will be doing is, so we'll be enlarging this all the way to the edge of the house. Um, there'll be another, the, the, the top bed will extend all the way down to the end with more trellises. And then there will be another bed and path on each of these terraces. Now to the right of that, to match up with the path that's coming in front of the house, there's gonna be a six foot path with stairs working its way all the way down to the bottom terrace. But I got those done by this past spring, spring of this year, and I was able to plant three perennial beds of asparagus and they're doing really well. Noah and I also worked hard this spring building retaining walls up here on the edge. Um, I've gotten the majority of stairs in, the paths are almost done, just a few more capstones. So in two years, I feel like without hiring any work done, just me, Bill and Noah, we've gotten a good amount done. Now, almost simultaneously, when we started carving the terraces out of the vegetable garden, there was another project that needed to be done. We needed to replace our patio cover for a couple reasons. It was so short. I'm six feet tall. I think it must've been seven feet tall because the roof was maybe eight to 12 inches above my head. It felt really claustrophobic under there and the heat had nowhere to go. So it was way hotter under there than even standing out in the sun. It was also rotting and leaking. And whenever it rained, the deck got wet. The deck was still in pretty good condition, but it wouldn't have been for long. Now I could have just replaced the roof and maybe raised it up a couple of feet, but that wouldn't have been next level now, would it? I knew this was gonna be a part of our tropical garden, so I needed to have that very exotic themed. I also wanted to vault the ceiling way up to give more headspace, but also just a more dramatic look, uh, some room to hang things up in the rafters and just really open up the space. I did a couple of sketches. One was taller and more elaborate and one was a little more tame. And in the end, we went with something in between and my brother-in-laws, Jim and Jeff, both helped me take the drawing and actually turn it into something real. Once the frame was up, I was wrestling with, do I pay to have this painted or do I do it myself? I finally decided after some prodding from Emily and you guys to split the difference and hire the primer and base coats done and do the final coat myself, which was just taking what they had done, a nice new paint job and giving it some character, making the new paint job look old and a little weathered. So the top went from looking like this 
to looking like this. The railing was a little different as it was gonna be three colors. So I hired the primer done and added brown, blue, and raspberry, which before aging, I was scoffed at by my family for those colors. But after aging it, everyone was happy with the results. By the time that was finished, winter was just around the corner. And so I was racing the clock again to get the roof on before the first rains. Like with everything else, I had never done this before, and according to experts in the video comments, I did it wrong. But guess what? It's been through a record-breaking rainy winter and tropical storm Hillary with no leaks and it's still standing. I did beat the winter rains and then the first spring on the property arrived and I was planting in the new vegetable garden. We were relaxing under our new patio cover, but there was another project that needed to get started. One that would prove to be the most challenging, the most labor intensive, the most time consuming, and certainly the most budget busting project I've ever worked on. We're still putting the finishing touches on, but 17 months ago, this was just a succulent and cactus garden. It's all full of succulents right now, which I'm not a huge fan of. I can appreciate them. But for me, this area would be better served, um, especially since it's right here with the English garden. I would love to have a humongous rose garden, flower garden, surrounding a beautiful gazebo. Not a tropical gazebo, but a nice white, maybe brick, uh, brick and white wood gazebo. Between that first tour and the following winter, the plans on what that area was going to be had changed a little. This whole area here is going to be part of our English garden, which also includes part of the front yard here. So the chicken coop is actually gonna go uh, in the back of this area against the fence. So all this area here, which is great because it's pretty much cleared and it's fairly flat as far as this property is concerned. Starting this week, this coming week, uh, we are starting with the chicken coop that's gonna be up here in this blank area. And it's going to be a pretty much full-size English cottage. I've showed you pictures before. I'll try to insert them right here uh, just so you can kind of get an idea of where my head is at. Pretty dead on, what do you think? That cottage has really reaffirmed to me that number one, I can learn new things. You can teach an old dog new tricks. The second thing is it really galvanized my ability to be able to think of something, draw it out on paper, and then just build it. And there's a lot more of that to come. But first I had to take that drawing and build it in real life. So this here, what you're looking at is the footprint of the chicken coop. And I believe it's about 13 feet by about 25 feet. And it is going to be a full on, almost life-size English cottage. So here's what we've got so far. Now, right now, it looks like a, you know, a Wild West ghost town with the shiplap here on the sides. And it would have to stay with that look for a while because a hot summer was moving in and I was either staying in the shade or staying in the house. But once the summer started winding down, I started working on the cottage again. 
Over the next few months, it really started to take shape. But in the first few months of this year, I was really able to start with the details and really expand my portfolio of skills that I would have never thought I would have needed. I may not be a pro, but as I always say, this is a chicken coop, not a house. By spring, the cottage was inching towards what we had all been looking forward to, the thatched roof. But that was gonna require skills I wasn't sure if I was capable of, so I did a little practice run. <laughs> What? Okay, I know it's a little crooked, but wow. I mean, this is fun. This is, this is fun. This has done so much for me. I have been so afraid of putting this roof on, but it's not that hard. It really isn't. I mean, yeah, we've got a lot to do, but it looks so good. I'm just... I'm, I, can't, I can't even speak about how excited I am. Like I can't even, I can't wait to see this done. With that confidence and excitement, I got to work on the roof. And as I went along, that cottage that I had in my imagination that I sketched out on paper 17 months earlier, started to reveal itself. we've still got work to do. It needs a door, windows, the bottom needs to be fill in, filled in, but those are small things compared to what we've already accomplished. And of course, what would an English cottage be without a traditional cottage garden to surround it? Now, as I said earlier, this all started at the exact opposite end of the spectrum from an English cottage garden. It was a cactus and succulent garden. I can appreciate succulents, but they were wrong for that space. So I was able to give a lot away and save some for the Mediterranean garden. It took a few months of methodically removing them area by area and turning a hill into terraces. Luckily, I had experience with terracing with a tiller and rake, and it did work for this area as the slope was more gradual and the terraces were gonna be much shorter. I didn't have any plans drawn out for the actual garden. I wanted it to be very organic and rustic. I wanted it to develop naturally as I worked on it. And it kind of just took the lay of the hill to show me where the terraces needed to be, the shapes and the spacing. I still needed to hold up those terraces with something. I didn't want to spend money on stone because we just bought a lot of stone for the vegetable garden. I originally for the vegetable garden was going to use a lot of the eucalyptus logs that were around our property. We had a ton of them. I'm glad in the vegetable garden I didn't do that and I went with stone, but for up here, it really kind of matched the rustic look I was going for. It wasn't an easy job bringing all the logs into the area and then burying them so they were secure, but little by little, I worked my way across the garden and got it done. When the day finally came to start planting this spring, I was pretty excited. In the background, the cottage was coming into its own and now I was gonna get to frame it with plants and flowers. I was really surprised to see how fast everything grew. In just three months, it went from almost nothing to completely filled in. We've got fruit trees, berries, a pumpkin patch, and lots of flowers. When we first started, there was a couple of stones here as stairs to go up into the garden. We did end up needing to take those out to put something a little more grand. And a couple of months ago, we faced the wood beams with stone and filled them up with gravel to really finish it off. I would say that the cottage garden is the most finished garden that we have. Um, of course, gardens are never finished. They're always changing and evolving, but structure-wise, it's pretty much done. As far as the rest of the property and what the future holds, if you've been watching our videos, you, you've been watching kind of our work in the pasture area because we do have our dairy calf, Daisy, coming home in December. So we have about three months to get everything ready. Last December, we took down nine eucalyptus trees, really big, dangerous ones. Eucalyptus trees are not native at all here and are not good. They're very flammable, they're very thirsty, and the branches can just fall at any moment, so they're a danger. So clearing this area was good all around. We still have a small grouping here that will be coming out. Uh, as far as grading, we've brought in about 2,000 cubic yards of fill dirt and have about 2,000 more to bring in. And that will fill these areas in, and instead of a valley here, it will be more or less following the slope of the driveway. Once we have all of the area filled in below, at the top, we're going to be bringing this huge berm around to meet up with the avocado tree. These trees here will be gone. 
There will be a background of trees to block out the neighbors and the road, and that will leave a huge hole here that we will turn into a large pond. Water from the hill behind us all comes down the driveway, and last winter it eroded its way through the pasture area. This pond will catch all of that water, and any overflow will be diverted into a large cistern at the bottom of the pasture. Just up from the pasture, we recently started work on the tropical garden. First of all, this hedge behind me divides the tropical garden from the Mediterranean garden. It's a Chinese banyan or Indian laurel, but these were actually given to me by a viewer. Thanks again, Russ. I planted these in February of last year, and this is how they looked then. I can't believe how much they've grown and filled in in just a year and a half. This huge patio area is going to be broken up into beds, path, and water. Out here just past the raised patio is going to be a large tiki hut. It's going to be built up on a platform so that it's level with the garden but not taking up the garden space. It'll be a larger scale replica of the chicken coop I built at our last house. I kind of have to since it's still the logo of Next Level Gardening. Down below this raised terrace, I'm going to plant tall tropical trees and plants to ring this area and create a jungle looking backdrop to the whole garden. We'll be putting in palm trees, uh, mostly king palms. I think those have the most tropical look of anything we can grow here. I would love to grow coconut palms, but we just don't stay warm enough in the winter to grow them. We're gonna be putting a lot of giant bird of paradise, just a bunch of other things to fill in that area to create a nice green buffer zone. In the end, it will have the look, though on a larger scale, of my last backyard. And we'll be putting in a natural pool or recreation pond in this area as well. It will be backed by rock work and waterfalls, which should block and drown out the road noise we sometimes get down below. And the taller trees and plants would be the backdrop of all of that rock work. So a lot of activity is gonna be happening here in this garden over the next few months. So stay tuned for that. Here in the opening in the hedge, there will be a gate. The hedge will be a couple of feet taller, but the gate will be themed tropical on one side and Mediterranean on the other. And over here in the Mediterranean area, by the way, this area won't be happening until next winter, we'll have a large pergola. We don't have an outdoor eating area as of yet, so it will be here, probably following the shape of the terrace. I would like to have a cozy seating area in this space with a outdoor fireplace. I would also love to have a pizza oven somewhere in this space as well. This will really be the main entertaining eating area of the property, so I want it to feel that way. Adjacent here in the upper terrace is the Mediterranean Herb Garden, which has really matured in a year since it was planted. I'm thinking of some kind of Italian looking fountain here in the back to give some height and weight to the area. I'd also like to train a pyracantha here on the wall. But first I have to convince Emily to let me stucco and paint these walls. My idea is right here, yellow with blue shutters, and that would be the three walls that you can see from the Mediterranean Garden, but nowhere else. Of course, I'll have to do it soon because I've got three espaliers against one of those walls and pretty soon they're gonna be bigger and more established. Why don't you guys help me convince her down below in the comments? Down here below the terrace will be a hedge near the fence to give a nice backdrop and block out the road and greenhouses beyond. It will be tall, but not tall enough to block out the mountain view. We'll probably have some Italian cypress, uh, maybe some dwarf ones. We'll have maybe some statuary and lots of Mediterranean plants. Between that area and the vegetable garden, I'm planning on having a mini vineyard and that will hopefully be planted in January. We'll see. Down at the bottom of the vegetable garden will be another transition. My initial idea was for the Mediterranean garden to continue once we take out this fence, but I'm not sure yet. There will be two orange trees flanking this walkway, and past that in all this area will be the Japanese garden. It'll still be a few years though before I start thinking about that. The next area to be started this winter will be the formal English garden. It's gonna consist of four areas, and it's gonna start with a courtyard that will be in front of the front door. This raised bed will be removed, and all of this area will be leveled with this path along the house. That level area will go out 30 feet from the path, and at that point be backed with a retaining wall that's gonna be about four to five feet tall. In the middle of that wall, there will be an opening with a grand staircase leading up to the next terrace. I'll tell you what's gonna be up there in just a minute. 
Looking out this way from the courtyard will be a lawn area 10 feet wide by 50 feet long. It will be flanked on both sides with 10 feet wide, 50 foot long traditional English borders. A 30 foot wide hedge will be at the far end of this area with a doorway in the middle of it that will take you into the orchard. In the hedge on either side of that door and kind of in the middle of the two borders will be two stone Gothic arch windows, kind of giving the look of an English old church ruin or something like that. On the back of the long bed nearest the house will be trees that are pleached. This will keep the path open to look into the garden and as well keep a view from the windows in the house looking out into the garden, but it will hide the solar panels when looking at the house from the garden. So what's gonna be up that grand stairway? Nothing for a couple of years, but hear me out. The current idea right up here is a fun and whimsical wonderland garden. I have always wanted to have one of those like really large chess sets where you can actually walk on the board and move the big pieces around. So that would be kind of the centerpiece of the garden. Around the entire outer edge of the garden would be tall hedges, kind of making it a secret enclosed walled garden space. Now that chess board can also double as an eating area, bringing in a long table. Um, overhead, I would have large, colorful paper lanterns. And then around the edge of the chessboard would be a small boxwood hedge. So between the boxwood hedge and the tall hedges would leave room for uh, flower beds. Now here's how we're going to know if you're really an Alice in Wonderland fan. In those beds, starting on one side, we would have white roses. On the other side, we would have red roses. And then blending in the middle, we would have um, white and red, like variegated roses. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that means because I'm sure some of you are going to get that. So if you get it, leave it in the comments. And if you don't get it, look in the comments because somebody has got to get this. Is that it? I think that's it. There is the Japanese garden, but I haven't even started to think about that yet. If you made it to this point, wow, thank you. I know this is a long, long video. I wanna thank everyone for their support over the last couple of years. Uh, whether you've been here all that time and even before we moved here, thank you. If this is your first time here on this video, welcome. I'm Brian and I'm a little mad in a good way. Let me know in the comments what you think of all this and I'll see you guys next time.